Hello. Hello, uh, hello, hello. I, okay, so I generally have a pretty alive. good memory too, so. Just so you know. You're live now. I've unmuted everyone. So. World, I think I'm taking. Um, hello. Relate to me. Cool. Hello, hello, hello. So. I'll do my best. This is how this is gonna work. It's session zero. We're gonna do character development afterwards. I'm gonna word dump a lot just so that you know. Just gonna put that up really quickly so that I can do this. Alrighty. So, first of all, table of contents, what we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna be showing the world map. I'm gonna go over some basic knowledge as to what the world has to offer and stuff like that. There's going to be a fair bit of homebrewing. Some races, some are gonna go to combat. We're gonna talk about Kanka.io. And then we're going to go into character development, which is going to be you guys creating your characters and talking about them and asking questions and stuff about the world that I didn't go over immediately with the world map because I won't go over every little detail about the world map. Alrighty, first up for this is not what I wanted. For that, just going to put on a laser pointer. So, this little spot in the middle, this is the uncharted lands. This area in the middle is where the No Man's Land event occurred within the first campaign, which we didn't stream. Um, I will go over that in a lot more detail if you want, uh, talking to players. Uh, in the campaign that will kind of come out naturally if you don't want to the whole explanation. Over here, I have to go to my maps really quickly. Me being unprepared as always. Do -do -do -do. <laughs> I'm always unprepared. So, that nation is called the Kingdom of Ulv. This kingdom is mainly predominantly elves and humans now, although a lot of humans have left and have created new kingdoms that um, are new to our existing players and going to be entirely new to old players. Up here, we have the Kingdom of Born. It is the most recently developed kingdom probably about 50 years of history at this point. Um, it is predominantly humans. Um, they have a few towns here and there, but they are pretty underdeveloped. It is mainly farmland and like early ore development and stuff. This orange spot is where we will be starting our campaign. This is the University of Skills. This university is the entire size of this country. It is not a single point. This country is very technologically developed, and it offers a wide range of classes that a lot of other countries frown upon because this university does teach like thieving skills and like assassinry skills, which the other nations kind of do frown upon because they're technically like crimes. <laughs> Up here in the pink, we have the Kingdom of Alexandria. The Kingdom of Alexandria is pretty unique in that they are, it is also predominantly human. Um, however, they are also predominantly halflings. All of their cities are on top of mountaintops. So at top of mountaintops range these wide cities. And if you are in the valleys below, you will see wide constructed roads going from mountaintop to mountaintop to go between these. There are a few towns within the valleys below. They are very 
like low class people like they are like slaves and like very very poor whilst the normal people and the rich live up above on the mountaintops up here in this yellow we have uh oh gosh i'm forgetting the exact name we have the kraken's republic this one is very interesting it is run entirely by pirates there are a few rules in between um but for the most part it is a very very free country where anyone can do pretty much anything down here we go to the strictest country that is on our map which is the theocracy of the saviors this country is run by the church of saviors who worship the people who ended the no man's land event long time ago about a hundred years ago down here we have the tier empire this is an empire of mainly beast races except for dragonborn and aarakocra which they have two countries down here which i'll get to in a moment um the entire country is split up into like states like the united states kind of thing where they're all split up pretty much evenly um where some might see very seem very small but they have like a lot of resources and they have a lot of access to resources compared to the larger um states that have fewer resources down here and i have to get the name for this one down here we have the kingdom of aves was that which no we have the kingdom of aves this one is going to be your predominantly dragonborn um dragonborn country and then we have the kingdom of chipsy which is predominantly Aarakocra. They once were one country together. After the Black Tower event, um, they split off as relations grew to be, um, to be unstable due to things that happened during that time that the Aarakocra aristocracy knew about, but did not warn anyone for it. Um, they were blamed for it, and um, they split off, split the country, basically, and the Dragonborn took a much larger part than the Aarakocra did because of how much is now destroyed of the country. That is the world map. Do I have, do we have any questions at the moment what from any of our players? What races are in the strict area? I'm sorry, repeat that. What races are in the strict country? So it is the, predominantly the human. Church area. It's predominantly human. However, there are a lot of dwarves. Hu uh, I would say, so the religion mm -hmm. itself is run almost entirely by humans with okay. um like priests and stuff being of any race i will I say though in terms of, of remembered the event i'm sorry i was i was thinking like okay what percentage of this population remembers the event if it's all humans ba very few if it's so, all dwarves almost all <laughs> dwarves and humans in this area kind of rival as to who the predominancy is because which we didn't do in the which we didn't stream the first campaign but like right over here was the capital for the dwarves kingdom in the first campaign this kingdom then got split off and now you have the newer countries but um so they're still there but the amount of dwarves and humans do very fluctuate, and it's almost very equal to each other. 
Um, I will say that even though I say that predominantly, uh, even though I say the predominant countries, there are still other races throughout all of these countries. Cool. So you don't really have to worry about, like, a dragonborn within, um, and I'm forgetting the name of the country already, the Kingdom of Ul. Because there are probably going to be a lot of dragonborn in that country. You just don't... It's You're just not the country that they're predominantly from. So there's not particularly any um, countries where any one race is unwelcome? Yes. That's good, cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm a little curious about the... Uh... Tieflings, and if any, like the any of, I assume you'll get to races, races later. like the rabbit folk. The I uh, will get to tieflings and, uh, in a moment. And what other races were you saying? Well, like the death here. Uh, the the rabbit the folk, the fairies, and then the three lineages from Ravenloft. So like the hexbloods and the dampier. Yeah. The new ones from the Witchlight and the Ravenloft book. Those so, five. the Ravenloft book... I, I haven't looked at the Ravenloft book yet. Um, I know that you wanted me to look at it, but I totally forgot because I was rushing to get things to a level that they needed to get so that we can start. Um, as for newer races, um, for the new books... Uh, that are coming out, I am already going to be adding those races into the mix. Um, they just, they haven't been released yet, so I haven't been able to, like, officially add them, add them. Um, but, yes, and they're the, uh, going to The other there. one I was curious about was the Athamar, or Athamar? I don't know how to pronounce it. So... I'm going to go with the stance that I believe I went with the last time, and that uh, Asimar are not in uh, the campaign as of this moment. They are not like well, a playable I was race. Because the, uh, the, I was only curious because the tieflings were being added, so I was wondering if the opposite, the no. Asimar so was being added. Oh, like if they were added, celestial, added, like a non-playable kind of stance. And I can't tell you why. <laughs> okay. You're going to have to trust me on this one. I can't tell you why, but at the moment, they're an unplayable race. You're just going to have to trust Damn me. Damn you, plot! <laughs> I'm sorry? Damn you, plot! Okay, we, I think we're good on this slide. Uh, okay. But yeah, yeah, it was just the tieflings, the fairy and rabbit, and the, uh... So, uh, fairies, three, 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 five, one. I will go over fairies when we're doing character development. If anyone wants to be a fairy, I will definitely be going over the specialties that you have to do through your backstory and stuff to be a fairy. So, just know that. Anyways, I'm going to move I'm pretty, on. Uh, the, the rabbit people, I'm pretty sure, could just be thrown in with the rest of the beasts. Oh, the rabbit people are being thrown into the Tear Empire. Don't worry about that one. <laughs> I, 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 I already, know, I, I'm already, I already have like a list of things. There's, it's probably about like ten or eleven races at the moment that all need to be in the Tear Empire, which is a lot <laughs> that I have to do. Okay. Anyways, Reminds I'm gonna continue. Things. Hold your questions for the moment. <laughs> So, we're going to go on to homebrewing, and we're going to go to races first. Aarakocra, very simple. Wings are separate from their arms. Boom, done, got it. Tieflings. So, general things of tieflings. They originate from the plains of hell. They are often mistaken as actual demons and hunted down and killed if they are discovered. Now, they are the direct descendants from demons depending on how far away they go from actual from the actual original demon that had relations with whichever parent that was like a demonic being 
um, they may have special abilities. For the playables, they do not have unique abilities. If you want to play one, you're going to be one of the lower, lower ones that do not have any abilities. Non-playable ones do and don't. It depends on which level of the tiefling hierarchy they are from. Genasi. Um, Go. The tiefling. Um... Devils or demons? Devils are from hell. Demons are from the abyss. Demons are more monsters. Yeah, that's... Devils make deals. Well, that's my world. <laughs> feel free to say it. Feel free to change it. But we're asking: Is this a t is this Retcon. a typo or is this an <laughs> actual change? Demons are from hell as well. <laughs> they are from both. So demons. Let's go with devils that. Are, yeah. <laughs> Let's go with they're Fair from enough. both. We'll do that okay. right now. Genasi. Genasi. I don't know. That's nice. Yeah, that was it. That we're good. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So, Genasi. Genasi mainly live in small villages. They mostly live in villages that aren't, like, mapped out because a lot of times, sometimes they're pretty hidden. For Genasi to be born or created, because Genasi can be technically um, the result of in a Genasi or another race, um, for them to actually be created, they have to be, um, the parents basically have to have sex within like a high amount of the element of the Genasi that is procreating. For example, water Genasi will typically mate within water, within rivers, within lakes, within the ocean itself. Fire Genasi? Kind of how it goes. Fire Genasi... <laughs> they they <laughs> um, have no location. So, uh, I didn't Fully add it, not... but I, I just thought of it like earlier, and I was like, oh, why don't I so add it? And then I saw that we had to start. Fire Genasi have to be near... Um, like fire have to be basically like surrounded they don't have to be in the fire but they have to be like somewhat surrounded by fire or uh, next to like lava wow got what? it and like to be surrounded by fire they could just set up like rocks Loads of around and like sticks and just like light like flame around it that kind of thing, like kind of like a ritual circle type like, thing. Wait, isn't a tea thing. Okay, but earth and air ones must be like really fucking prominent then, because earth Easy. is everywhere. Not in air earth is, is the everywhere. common one. However, air will is a lot less common because of the fact that for air, air is going air is very tricky because they have to be surrounded in all sides by air therefore oh, they'd have to basically be like falling from a great height and somehow survive Which so I they couldn't just be in like an incredibly levitate. windy environment they would yeah. definitely levitate but <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so they yeah okay now let me go on to the let me go on to uh, combat. Combat's going to be <laughs> a long explanation. <laughs> I'm going to preference with that this system is not complete. As we come across situations that do not technically have rules in this combat system, we will be creating rules. And we will be adding them. Okay? Just, just so that we know. For the combat system, we're using below. I only have four spears right now. That's fine. It was only for an example image. It wasn't for, like, some big thing. The actual thing itself has um, enough for every player. So, this square right here is your healing square. The healing square is important in that I would call it the protected square. It's pretty protected. 
Except for bosses. Bosses can penetrate that protection. But, like, minions that are in these squares can't. These are where the players are. And this is the attacks. Melee is the only one that moves. If, let's say, this person dies, this person is now in melee range. Bunch versus zombies. This document up here is the whole rules and stuff. So anyone can technically go into it and stuff. Um, I will be posting it on... Um, on our Twitter, on Patreon. It'll be in the description for the YouTube archive as well. So, yes. Um, you can read it yourself. We're going to be actually doing a play of it um, when we do the actual combat. So do read up on it. Um, but, yes. Just know that it is not entirely concrete. And we may change things so that everything gets a lot more balanced as we're doing it. As I was planning it out, I was planning it out with no one actually playing through the system. So as we go through and play through the system, we're going to see the yays and nays for it. We're going to go over um, what parts of it are like redundant and that we don't need. And what parts of it should be added so that it doesn't become a very broken system that doesn't work at all. So we'll play test it, basically. Yes. Well, we're gonna be playing testing it throughout the campaign. But as we go through the campaign, the system will become more and more concrete. Okay. As we have, as you guys would have used your abilities and stuff and been able to get used to how things work. Um, I do have special um, token icons that I am creating for the system itself so that you know um, one of the rules for example is that if you have a skill or if you like grapple someone and take their speed down to zero their turn is skipped in that round of combat and so there will be a special token that lets me know that person was skipped. Oh, wow. Wait, speed to zero means they don't get a turn? Yes, that makes grapple because people are bringing so up the better. point, I think it was you and uh, Anwar that were both get, bringing up the point of what about this uh, skill? And as I read through it, it was like brings the enemy's speed down to zero. And so I was like, well, if the speed's down to zero, then we can skip their turn because they won't have the ability to do anything. But they're that, uh -huh. normally they can still do ranged attacks. They can still heal. They can still cast spells. They, and if ranged. someone's in melee, they can melee. Yes, but I'm just putting their, I'm just skipping their turn. Just to make it easy. Okay. Just to make it Grab easy build, and so that we don't have to worry about what if this and what if this and what if this if you bring their okay. speed down to zero and it goes the same for the players if someone brings your speed down to zero it'll be a skip turn oh this makes sentinel absolutely broken it's going to make things very interesting and i and it may Sentinel's be, gonna be amazing this is the beauty of this system not being concrete is that we can alter it to suit our needs and we can we'll also make, make it so that things aren't entirely broken. Change it. That will be a thing. If we change the combat to make the thing that the broken thing that we're doing not work anymore, can oh. we change the character so that it's not focused around a thing that doesn't exist? No. If you try, I'm I'm gonna warn you all right now. If you try to abuse this system, I will abuse your character. <laughs> <laughs> And no, that is like, a promise. <laughs> like, let's say we do grappling because, like, oh, in this one, grappling is e even stronger than it normally is. And then we change it later to where grappling is weaker than it normally is. It's like, well, great. Yes. I, guess I, I, I will nothing. definitely be doing I will do that. But also, before, if you abuse my system, I will abuse your character. 
and in ways that you might not like. That is a promise. If you try to abuse the system, I will abuse you. At the end of the day, if you make a high strength character for grappling, they're going to be pretty damn lethal with weapons too. Yeah, yeah. it's mostly like if you take stuff like the grappler feats and things. Like, yeah. It's like, oh, like, darn, I, I'm stuck in this grappler feat because it was going to be good, but now it's not good anymore. That's quite a thing to, um, like, gamble a uh, feat thing on. So it's it only might a be best. because the rules aren't consistent. But to be honest, the, if, if grappling is that powerful anyway, it'd be worth just taking the chance to grapple them without the feat. Oh, well, that's what I mean, though. Like, if you, like, if we, yeah, apparently if we, if we invest things into something that is specific to the system, we can't trust that it will always be useful. There might be enemies that you can't grapple as well, because they're... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's normal, Enemies can I mean, still like, be in the specific. air. They can still be up, even though they're in a close square. Before. That doesn't mean that they're not going to be, like, if enemies are like within a tower i'm not going to retcon it where they're now on the ground no they're still in that tower yeah it's just normally grappling someone doesn't stun them yeah well like i said you abuse the system i will abuse you anyways moving on <laughs> anyone have any other questions Because I will go over this document uh, later. Because I will show it after the um, before Out we do of... the character building. Sorry, I have a it's not about, about warlocks, but that's about it. I didn't catch that. I have a question about warlocks, but it's not to do with the combat. So. <laughs> Oh, no. We will get to that one. Get to it. <laughs> I I literally cannot tell you. It it is I, there are just some oh, yeah. things that I cannot tell you. I think you had an idea already for how you're doing this, but how are you doing opportunity attacks? I'm sorry. Repeat your last bit. How are you handling opportunity attacks? Oh, that is still like being thought of. This is where I am like. Uh, okay. Opportunity attacks is something that I want to play test before actually putting it in and making it a concrete type thing. Okay. It is one of the things that I do want to test first before putting that... it in because opportunity attacks is pretty special. And sneak attack? A repeat. It's sneak uh, attack. Sneak, sneak attack. Okay, sneak attack is laid out, and I can I will give me one second just to bring it up since everyone's asking specific questions that I don't have the system up for right now. Should be this one, right? Yep. Okay. Open this. I'm on another computer now. <laughs> I'm on a different computer now. Okay. For sneak attack. Sneak attack is gained in a number of ways. The enemies within the middle... Uh, where's my pointer? Okay. So the enemies within this middle section here have sneak attack applied. Okay. If your party outnumbers the amount of enemies on the board, you can get sneak attack on all the enemies. <coughs> wow, that's so powerful. I mean, normally yeah. you can no. get sneak, sneak attack attacks, on all the enemies. There's one more. Is, there's so. one more. Sneak attacks only apply to bosses if they are the only ones on the board. Guess who's going to have friends? I think that's fair. So if they have any minions on the board, your sneak attack will not work on the boss. So this Seems also fun. means, like, all of the things, all of these, like, specific abilities that either functionally or actually say proc sneak attack do 
do those still work or do you have to do these things now? Like if you have advantage on a roll. Or if they do the bonus action to give themselves advantage. No. Yeah. These yeah. conditions have to be met in order for you to count sneak attack. Good to know. If one of these conditions are met, because these are technically separate conditions. If one of the conditions are met, you can apply sneak attack. Does that make sense? Okay. Do you want to make it the things you listed and needing advantage, or and or I guess it's not normally like that. Rip. Never mind. From from what I can gather, um, you have to meet the normal conditions for sneak attack to get it, but it also has to meet what was mentioned. So if the boss is on their own on the battlefield, but you wouldn't have advantage, and there's no one with him, like melee range of them, then you wouldn't get sneak attack anyway, kind of thing. Well, technically, you're always going to be in, in melee range because, as I explained before, melee range moves down as enemies are killed. How does that work with ranged and ranged having disadvantage if they're within melee range? So, r no matter what, in these two rows here, Ranged will always be at normal C. This is the only line that range will have um, disadvantage for. So, will a boss ever enter that front row, or will they always be technically at the back? A boss is always in melee range. So, However, a ranged character will so, always so here's, have disadvantage here's, on a boss. Let me let because this is going to answer your question. A boss is always in melee range. However, if there are enemies in front of the boss, this is this is one of the concrete things for an opportunity attack. If there are enemies in front of the boss, you have the chance of getting an opportunity attack against you for attacking the boss directly. I don't remember what the percentage is. Do, 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 do. And I think you meant the the boss is kind of always in both ranges. So you can always hit a range attack regularly. Yes, you can always hit the regularly. boss if there is a boss. There isn't always going to be a boss. But the boss is always in range of everything without negativities. Okay, cool. That's, that's what I was going for. Oh, are we still using the... Uh, the, the, the I, I think this is separate still but the goblins that we that were changed for the uh, uh last one are they still changed for this one i think that's not required information wouldn't you love to find out yeah oh, <laughs> like, fucking that's, damn it that's whether his monsters are still homebrewed or homebrewed differently we don't need to know that for character creation monsters are still a bit powerful they are not as powerful as they were we're level one. I will say that not and nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to lethal combat. Ah, yes. Anyways. We any more questions? Level one, every combat is lethal combat. Yep, yep. In every game I play, every combat is lethal combat anyway, so. Yeah. You, if you want to go for non-lethal, you can tell me you want to go for non-lethal. It's still limited to melee attacks, right? Uh, technically, yeah. What? Oh, are saying. we using guns? They're guns. I'm gonna do a non-lethal fireball. Are there guns? Are guns allowed? I will get to that. Okay, because I wanted to know about the the. the I will what, get what to is that. It called? When I go over Kanka, there will be things that I will go over. With your questions, I'm totally thinking you're going to go for some stuff. Hexblade bunny gunslinger now. <laughs> no! Not, hex, not Hexblade, uh, Hexblood. Oh god. Oh, I cannot <laughs> wait. <laughs> bunny gunslinger. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> Hexblood bunny gunslinger. Oh, I cannot wait. Oh, okay. <laughs>
All right, I'm gonna move on. I'll move on. Uh, where's my mouse? It's over here. Okay. So, moving on. Kenka.io is I where you will find all right? of the very in-depth stuff for the campaign. Now, some of these things are locked uh, for public. So, quests and that's it. Quests are the only thing that, um, as a viewer, you will not be able to see. Um, simply because uh, for that, it allows you to see some things that I have restricted the players from seeing that I don't want people seeing because it ruins bits of narrative. Mm -hmm. I haven't figured out how to fix it. I've contacted the devs, and they are looking into it. Um, as for maps, you will see in-depth maps and stuff. I have a timeline there. I do have a timeline laid out. And there is a timeline laid out. Locations are just more in-depth. Uh, it includes basic knowledge, but also if you go more in-depth into the location itself, you will unlock other entries that go more in-depth. Quests, we're going to track all your quests. It's pretty basic. There are quest lines and stuff to them. So just so you know, there are different quest lines you can go down um, that have a resolution. Notes or journal. You can choose however way you want to take notes. I do recommend that you take notes in Kanka. That way you always have access to it. And it's not something that we can easily, that you will have the ability to easily lose. Nice. That solves my multi-computer uh, problem. Repeat, I'm sorry. Oh, I was just saying it solves the issue I have where I'm sometimes on my laptop and sometimes on my PC. Yes. And because Kenka.io is a website, as long as you have internet access, you can do it. For journal <laughs> For the journals... I would, I would like, and I would prefer that if you do do journals, that you kind of make them more journalish by like having it done in character type of thing, where it's like your like character diary, making it like an actual okay. like writing down in an actual journal. I'm, I'm totally for that. That will make me more likely to write notes. I can write them in character. Yeah, you can do both if you want to do both. If you want to take notes. And like canonically, your character like has a journal that like has like all this stuff in it, and you want to do that, you can totally do that. I will not like stop you from doing so. That sounds cool. Any questions about that? No. Nope. No. Nope. No. All right, I heard a no. Moving on. All right, so we have character development, but before we do that, I do want to go over to this. Let me go over to, let me switch this out so that nobody can see the address bar because that's uh, somewhat bad. Um, so we have the characters here that we'll go over. I just want to show off Kanka.io right now. This is stuff I have uh, stuff in here. Uh, characters is something that the players will have access to. It's basically just notable characters. It's going to have like kings and queens in it. It's going to have like notable characters. And it's just going to be like basic things about them. Something that isn't really necessary for the campaign. So I don't have it access to the public for. Organizations is another one where it's just like, just reminding people of things that are there. Um, some organizations might become more prevalent, in which case I will unlock it for the public. But nothing's discovered right now, so I am not going to show that off because that will ruin some things. Timelines, I'm going to show that off really quickly. For the timeline, it's pretty basic for the timeline. Um, it just goes over main plot points. 
main things that happened. Um, but it also goes over, and I'm going to scroll down to so the campaign. So the first campaign that was never streamed ended here. Destruction of the Black Tower. Then the campaign ended. And this is where the epilogues took place between this date and this date. After this, artifact the magic had become for between this fifty year period, magic had kind of been a, a bit of a taboo subject for this like fifty years. Due to the fact that magic was mainly the source of everything that happened during the whole Black Tower event and during this whole chaos of the crystals, it was this whole thing that happened that normal people kind of just shied away from magic for a time being. During this time, artificers uh, became the rule and they pretty much created machines, they created a whole bunch of different things, um, and eventually magic became back to its normalcy and like popularity, but on top of that was this layer of artificing that expanded with magic becoming a norm again. Um, after a hundred year a hundred years after the destruction of the Black Tower, um, a statue was erected of the saviors um, where the Black Tower stood in the uncharted lands. This is when this is when the Church of the Saviors really gained their power and took control of that of the area of the map. That is their theocracy now. Um, after 30 years later, um, a new era began. And whilst there was still like chaos, there is still pretty much chaos throughout this entire thing. Um, after that, in the year 930, um, the, a lot of countries reorganized and restructured their whole being. It is why a lot of the countries are now named different things, which some of our classic players who played uh, who played in Campaign 1 will note that there are countries that, although stayed the same size, they changed in terms of leadership and in terms of the name uh, to go away from the past. After, like, 20 years after that, the, uh, the Adventuring Guild kind of rose to its peak. At that point in time, the Adventuring Guild rose to its peak it, uh, with kingdoms kind of restructuring themselves, and at this point, a little bit still in the process of restructuring themselves and restructuring their military force there were a lot of mercenaries that came out of the adventuring guild who helped smaller towns and cities that their with their armies and their guards kind of being like up in the air as to what they're supposed to be protecting like they know they're supposed to be protecting the citizens but like, what rules are the citizens supposed to be following type thing? Like, there's a whole gap as to like, what are they supposed to be doing for the citizens? What's illegal? What's not illegal? Um, we are going, we start uh, in the year 9060. Um, rifts have begun to open small ones and from that tieflings have been coming through many of the tieflings throughout this entirety of the time have been mistaken as demons and devils and such and have been basically killed on the spot there 
the tieflings haven't been mostly warlike there are some that they come through with force and with like what could be mistaken as like warlike tendencies um a couple years after these rifts start to open the dragons have started to die and this is the first time that dragons have started to die outside of their natural cycle of like age and this is alarming to some but to others don't really care and then we get to the start of the campaign all right so Boop. sorry i'm on mobile again my no it's fine ethernet gave out so we're going to go on to creating characters now if anyone watching i don't know who's watching or if there are any if you want to be in the I'm dark watching. about the characters and stuff you can totally click out at this point but we're gonna stay on stream we're gonna do some character development um you can ask me questions and stuff this way everyone has a chance to listen to the answers and i'm not answering questions a hundred times uh some things are going to be uh secretive that i may mute and drag people away to give the answer for so You guys that already have character concepts, want to explain what you got? Uh, yes. So, if you have a character concept, go ahead. If you have questions, also go ahead. Um, I'm going to raise the volume so uh, people might hear themselves, and it might go back into the mic, which then you guys might be hearing like an echo. It's because I don't have a set of headphones on right now, and some of you guys are talking very quietly. Um, so if you guys could project just a tiny bit, that would be helpful, <laughs> so that I can hear. I mean, I, I don't have character concepts very well in terms of story stuff, uh, but I do have a couple builds. So. That I wanted. I will be... So let me just go over where we're starting first, because I haven't gone over where we're going to be starting. And for that, I am actually going to bring back up. That wasn't it. No, come back. <laughs> I'm actually going to bring back up Kenka.io. Oh, whoops. Yeah, because we're starting and... the university skills, right? Yes, we're going to be starting in the University of Skills. So let me go over and... Uh, when you mentioned it earlier, I wasn't sure if you said it was technologically de developed is, or undeveloped. It is technologically oh. developed. So Okay, cool. Yeah, awesome. I'm going to explain something about the University of Skills right now that uh, is very... Let me just go into it so that people can see so if you look at the university of skills do you see all the blue mm -hmm. lines and the green lines and the red lines yes those yes. are underground train lines you can think of them as subway lines trains are super super new they are run off of magical crystals that create a uh, fire and and there is also one for water so there's fire and water creating steam which is moving the engine along which is bringing them across normally to go from place to place within the country itself could take weeks or even a month the trains 
because they go so fast, bring that time down to minutes or sometimes oh. hours. Sometimes an hour. Depending on from what place you're going to which place. Pl ones such as the red lines go a bit slower as well as the green line. They go a bit slower because they're only going they're only going several feet. They're not going like miles away. So they don't need to build up the momentum. So they don't need a yeah, they don't need to build up the momentum or anything. So those ones go a bit slower to those places and there's usually only like a couple trains for them due to the fact that they're not like actual like classroom classrooms. They're more so I'm going to go over here. So this structure right here, the one that's the jagged crystal, the red line that is north to what looks like a city. You aren't streaming anymore. I'm sorry. I'm watching him. No, no, he's streaming it on Twitch. Yes. Not on Discord. Oh, did uh, it stop streaming on Discord? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry. If you go in Kanka.io, uh, and you go into the map for the university, um, the one above the, directly north of the one that looks like a city, that is basically a training ground for spells. You enter in and you're basically going into like a pocket dimension that you can basically test out any sort of spell that you want. There are some safety nets with that. There's like a regenerative crystal that will heal you if you get hurt. Um, so yes. The other one is more of a, the other red line is to go more towards like spell tinkering kind of thing if you like you said with guns so i'm going to use guns as an example um like if you were to imbue a spell into like a bullet type of thing that is where you'll go to do that and to get help in doing so so it's like an artificing place yes this spot here now the town that i was talking about so this and put so fireball in a bullet I just there are know. technically two <laughs> public cities within the university of skills there is the magic citadel which is what the red lines are connected to and a lot of the blue lines basically go all to the magic citadel the magic citadel is pretty much like a big hub and it's a, it's a giant city. Then you have the administration city, which is up north. It's, it's close to the bit of yellow that's at the top of the map. It's the like classel looking one. That one is also, it's smaller than the magic citadel, but it's still a city into itself. And then the rest of them are classrooms. I don't have it labeled yet, but I will have it labeled, so you will know which is which. You can probably guess as <laughs> for, you can probably guess with the imagery as to which, as to like which ones are which. Are, are they class based or like school of magic based? They are based? class based. Okay, cool. Some of the classes though are merged with other classes. I would so imagine, like, like, wizardry and sorcery are pretty closely related. Yeah, so, like, those oh, are, like, closer together. Right. So as well as, like, ranger and uh, druid are pretty close together as well, so they might go to the same building to learn about different things as well. Guessing they're the I mean, two joined by the green line. Yes. Sorcerers might go to practice, but I don't think they would go to study. There is a blacksmith. No, it no, is the no, one no, with no. the pillars of smoke coming out. That's not what I said. <laughs> practice. He said, no, he I said sorcerers wouldn't would go to more... practice. That's what sorcerers the... Sorcerers wouldn't go to study. 
Because their whole thing is they get the magic from natural and not Well, studying. yes. That's why, that's why there's the whole practice building that you go into, like, an alternate dimension for. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But there are other things. There is one which you all probably can guess which one is which. There is one for blacksmithing. Uh, there's one for I monks. I still can't see anything, by the way. So there are two. Um, so there are two that are very similar that you would think would be together. So it's still not displaying on Discord, by the way. I know. I'm watching on Twitch. Um. Yeah, I know. Uh, let me see if I can get that up again. Uh, give me one second to do it on Discord. Did it go away when I switched the first time? It might have. So thing is, even most of the time, I, only the um, first page of your PowerPoint was showing on Discord, so I've been watching on Twitch the whole time. Ah, okay. It didn't I can't over. really watch on Twitch because I'm in the that car driving, a lot. so yeah. I just have to visit the stream. Well, yeah, the main point that. of the PowerPoint was more for the audience, um, because I'm going to send you the PowerPoint anyways. But you guys were mainly just oh, supposed yeah. to listen to me just jabber on about Well, I'm taking notes as well, so I can always try and fill you in um, later on. And, of yeah, course, this will be put on YouTube, late, won't it? I will answer any questions afterwards, after we end the stream and stuff. I'll answer any questions you have. Um, but up here in the mountains are where the monks are. That's where they are whole thing is and then down here you have more religious this is the only building down here that is for that both are for like priests to study like and like meditate upon their own religions as well as like clerics go to uh learn uh, learn other skills from other clerics so this, this building down here has sort of like a mix between both um, both like actual like clergy people from like other religions that all like coincide in like one place and um, and like clerics and other like religious based classes. There is one rule for that building and that is if nobody, if you cannot intentionally try to convert someone to your religion if someone comes up to you and asks you about it that's perfectly fine but you cannot go seek out and tell people their religion's invalid the only religion that is true is their own type of thing that is like the only rule Not for that <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry can you repeat that it's called even dan <laughs> Evangelize. <laughs> you cannot Jehovah's Witnesses. Can you? Can we take a moment to talk about our Lord and Savior Thor? Down here, we have the sneakering classroom and stuff. There is one caveat, as you can tell. There's the the stop for the train is pretty far away from. Uh, oh, I have to do something real quick. I'll be back in like five minutes. Okay, maybe less. Um, you might realize that that stop is pretty far away from uh, the actual classrooms itself. That is because mm, scary place. to be able to enter the classrooms, you have to get to the front door without being detected. And throughout the forest, in between the front door and the stop, are a bunch of, um... I would call it like magic like eyeballs that will try and search for anyone going to it and if they were spotted they will be locked out and they will have to be forced to track all the way back to the train stop and go again basically it's the classroom of get good yes the only people excluded from this are administration and teachers. 
because they ain't got time for that. <laughs> oh yeah, can you imagine if all the students make it and the teacher doesn't because they were rushing? <laughs> what if they just teleport? Snuck by yeah. like a charm. Um. Also, the spot. So the snaking classroom spot and the uh, religious temples. Uh, those are the only train stops that are open to the public because they are closest okay. to the main roads that they actually have routes to go to them. So and is that the red line there, that's crossing uh, east to west? into the university, typically straight to the administration building where they go to register and then go to their respective places. There are and we're all students? Um, every... So you can either choose to live within the Magic Capital uh, Citadel or the Administration City, or you can live near one of the... Uh, near the classrooms, mm -hmm. which are mapped out. The dorms are like, a, are like a short walk away from the classrooms. They're not far. So yeah, this is where we're starting. These two are both druid classrooms. This one is more for experimental type of things, like experimental plant work and stuff. The reason why this line is separate is because this line is designed um, so that it can be cut off from the rest of the uh, line so that it doesn't have speedy access to infect the entire uh, country itself and so that they can control the spread of something that gets out of control hmm. um, so out of curiosity Go ahead. regarding the university of skills is this something that everyone would go to or is it like a really privileged thing like why I'm trying so, to like why our characters would be there anyone can go your characters can go for whichever reason you choose, You're but they first. accept anyone. Whilst so they could kind of just wander. There is into you have the land, to, basically. So you do have to pay, but there is a kind of thing where you can defer off your payment, and they. we all we all have student loans. Yes, basically. Standard. And they do have, Unless you've got rich parents. They do have creatures that will, like, track you down for, like, payments and stuff. Cut loan sharks. Basically. Bruh, I want that job. <laughs> Working up to become a loan shark eventually. Basically. They're like, um... They're all, they're all druids that turn into sharks. I forget what the creatures are called, but there's a creature... <laughs> Bankers. That no, it's like an actual creature in D and D, that um, that really. Loves I know the gold. one you mean. I can't think what it's called either. Yeah, it it like really loves gold, and it's able to like teleport and like track people down really easily. Wait, what about that one creature that lives in bags of holding? Wait, repeat your question. What about that one creature that lives in bags of holding? <laughs> Makes me think of the one off of, um... Uh, the... Or the Potter fucking false Hydra. Oh. Yeah. Fantastic Anyways, creatures and where to find them. The little this is where we're mole. starting. So, you all will be starting... Um... You can decide, so I'm going to give you the decision of if you are going into the school for your first time, or if you've been at the university for a little bit. Okay. And we can't be a teacher? I'm sorry? Uh, no, never mind. I'm, I was asking if we could be a teacher, but that's kind of... No. 
they, high level stuff. No. Way overpowered, yeah. The teachers the teachers are like level fifteen and up kind of beings. Um actually the druid teachers are um level twenty arts druids. No, 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 no. They're um what are the plant people called? Um Sylvans? No. They're not it Dryads? Yes, they're dryads. The nature teachers are all dryads. Who are from the forest where the where the classrooms are propped out of. Wow. That's cool. They just are the desk. <laughs> <laughs> Random what race question? Do gnolls exist? I'm sorry? Do gnolls exist? So that I can do custom lineage? Gnolls. I don't remember what uh, a gnoll is. Are they the hyena people? They're the hyena they're people. Like hyena people? Oh, yes. They you've got to practice that the... laugh if you're doing so, that. All of the, <laughs> all the races, and I'll go. Ah, uh, wait, 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 wait. I need to, I need to black this out for. I need to, I need to just black out my screen really quickly, so that it's not a race that you can play. I would have to do custom lineage, but last time they didn't exist. Um. I. No, I guess we didn't. You didn't say goblins existed either, and they did. I and these are rather... these are on par. I would rather you, everyone stick to, like, playable, playable races. Official. Like, official playable races. And so no custom lineage? Uh, yeah, let's not do custom lineage. I mean... Hmm. Or, no, I'll allow custom lineage, but there has to be, like an actual like playable race within that sort of custom lineage i mean dnd beyond if you select custom lineage on dnd beyond it only lets you pick from official content anyway yeah so yeah like dnd beyond custom lineages are okay but yeah there are a lot of lineages there are a lot of things um so, uh, someone asked about fairies, didn't they? Mm-hmm. I asked about fairies. So, fairies are very few and far between. Um, so, you can choose a fairy. Just be aware that, like, nobody else will know what the fuck you are. And a lot of people, especially the Theocracy of Saviors, might try to hunt you down. Oh no, that sounds fun. I'll fucking kill them. I'll kill them all. <laughs> uh... Yes. What else? What other? Um, oh, Fearbold. I'm going... I For Fearbold, we're gonna kind of go to more of... Um, uh original lore for our fear bulg in that they live oh, nice. in like secluded tribes that like reject like all forms of like technology and stuff could um if the deep forests of the university of skills are very natural environments uh which are controlled by sylvans would it be fair to say there could right. be a tribe of fear bulg living in there Yes. Like guarding, there, being sort of guardians of the forest? There could be, yes. But they would be very secluded and they wouldn't really, they would live off the land. They wouldn't really go out for help or anything. No, no. But they could potentially be approached for help. Yes. Oh. Um. Uh. Oh, wait, I had a question about, uh, fucking, oh, Warforged, yeah. Ooh. Warforged. Warforged exist. Okay, so they existed in the first campaign. 
they yeah they were so they are still around so the backstory for warforged within this world is that warforged were created by the dwarves to serve in an army they were basically mindless soldiers when they were created later on after there was no war they developed their own sentience and they now do not serve the dwarves they serve themselves I actually had an idea for a warforged barbarian uh, where it's basically just glitchy <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, oh roll a d4, no, do you rage? Oh, I forgot. Uh, no, it's uh, a Warforged pa uh, Barbarian Path of Wild Magic, so very glitchy. So, oh, that's uh, crazy. There is, one, there is one race that I forgot to mention. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. If you two, or three, remember from Campaign 1, Triton were very seclusionist. Yes. So, they are, they are not now? still very seclusionist. You cannot play them. <laughs> They're still very seclusionist. However, they do not have as much control over everything as they once did. If you remember, they controlled pretty much the entire ocean around Nari. After the uh, destruction of the Black Tower, they had used most of their pent-up magical energy that they had been saving for such, for a long time. They had used up most of it, and therefore they did not have the magical force to be able to control the races as they once did uh, so that they would be on like a higher plane so they've kind of fallen from grace so that means we can be pirates yes there is an entire country dedicated to pirates if you did not catch hell that. yeah because <laughs> one of my other characters ideas was pirate cleric tempest lion boy I have too many ideas. Sick. Yeah, I've I got so many characters. Many yes. And I I'm just no I'm idea. going through the races no right now, trying are. to trying to go over some races with you guys. So. Uh, lizard folk. Lizard folk are there. They're a part of the Tier Empire. Okay, Do they so still have the thing? I'm sorry. Do they still act the way that they do? Neutral and yeah. Yeah. Disconnected. They're still That's very. Like they're them. still like they're like normal. See, I'm so something that oh something I didn't go over in the last campaign. I know I'm referencing a lot of the last campaign that nobody knows about because I never streamed it. For all mm -hmm. of you listening yeah. in right now, as we're just jabbering about different things, I'm just like crossing my T's and dotting my eyes right now. The Yang T purebloods were outcasted. With yes, the new tier empire, well. they now have a state of their own, and they are viewed as equals. Okay. Woo! There Another was a of my whole revolution that happened Yanti. that resulted in the creation of the tier empire. Yuan tier. One of one of my ideas was a uh, Yuan T wizard. Well, it was either going to be a Yuan T or a um, uh, a dam uh, dam here. Well, if you remember, uh, the Yang T purebloods were only outcasted within like that that one country. The rest of the world yeah. didn't really give a shit. Even though I they're mean, inherently we evil. Them negatively because they're they're little devilish trickster kind of people but do you do um, the inherently evil stuff i'm sorry do you do this race is inherently evil no or just chaotic i i'm leaving the races um in terms of their um alignment alignment more towards what uh, official content has 
can play it however you want. I really don't care if you want to play a lawful good uh, tiefling. Or, a, or like a... A tiefling paladin. <laughs> or like a chaotic evil paladin. That's, that's really normal. I really, I really don't care yeah, yeah. Yeah. as to like yeah. how you guys play the characters. Because that's what makes it interesting. Creative license. Exactly. So there are two um, races that I did not go over that I did not know about truthfully before this. <laughs> the uh, Lokatha and the Grung. I didn't know about these either. What are so they? So apparently they're new races. Anyways. They've been around a while. They've, um, they're have they just from some really minor books. Yeah. So yeah, One um, Grung above is delicious. So just for, because I didn't even know they existed, we're going to say they don't exist. <laughs> I don't Dang it, they could live loss. with the lizard folk, though. They could totally, or at least the grunk. They would so just be food, though, let's face it. Yeah, for lizard they folk. would yeah. be, though. Which is why I'm saying no to them. <laughs> Dang it. No food. Um, yeah. All the other races pretty much, like, mingle. I only I only said the predominant ones just so that you knew which was like the predominant race of each of the countries. So you allow centaurs, Do we have access to all these of that. Extra races. Yes. Um, I I allowed I allowed sexual relations between a dragonborn and an elf last the last campaign. If you would remember, Gash. Equal opportunities. It's true. Does that really count? They didn't have any children. You guys fornicated a lot. Why are you the little elf boy pregnant? Just because you didn't conceive doesn't mean it didn't happen. Exactly. And <laughs> you don't need evidence to prove it happened. It would never happen. Uh, I need I need uh, a couple of minutes again. Uh, I'll be back in a sec. Don't take uh, your time. We're just creating characters right. and stuff right now. It's not okay. too too big of a deal. Let uh, let me okay. turn this off really quickly. I have to go back to character? on and off so that I can check on your guys' progress with creating characters because I can't let the world see the code to enter into the campaign. <laughs> uh, are we doing it through the Come order? on. Hello? Um, mine I'll be doing on D&D Beyond on the camp in the campaign. <clears throat> Come on. Where are we creating characters? D and D Beyond. Uh, which camp? Are we still doing it in the order? Oh no, no, it's called Campaign Two. Hang on, I can put a. Um... Oh, it should be. Give me a moment. If someone wants to put the share link in the general chat. Yep, I'll do it. Do so. Uh, I, my computer is being very slow right now because I am, I am very much like multitasking right now, which my RAM does not like because it is very slow. <laughs> my RAM is very slow, which is the one reason why I hate this laptop. Fortunately, the one good thing about my laptop is it's got ridiculous RAM because of what I bought it oh, for. Oh no, <laughs> I have like 16 gigs of RAM. It's just very slow RAM. Oh, okay. Yeah. More of a push than a RAM, then. Yeah, it really is. So... I'm just gonna, like, minimize that. Oh, so yeah, that are we doing custom up. origins? I, I know that. people are seeing nothing. Actually, uh, where's my mouse? Okay. Oh, yeah, with regard to character creation um, options, custom origins and... Uh, Things like that. Custom languages. Um, that all... So, where the hell is my? And then fixed or rolled HP. I'm sorry, things are things are happening right now on my on my screen. Just give me a moment because my computer is freaking the fuck out. Um, I'm loading way too many things at once, so I'm probably gonna need to stop that. So meantime, in the meantime, with the rest of you um, guys, no um, custom. I do not. Allow, I do allow for the custom languages, 
Um, the custom origins I know just got like majorly updated, and I have not explored that yet. So, oh, we're not going to do that right now. Give me one second because I just, I know that Discord just shot itself. Hello? Yes. Hello, everybody. Welcome. I'm having trouble connecting. Welcome, welcome. I'm having trouble connecting. Welcome, welcome. Yes, hello, 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 hello. And I need to reload Discord really quickly. Alright, so since my computer is shitting itself right now, I am going to end the stream here. We're going to continue developing characters and stuff. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. Uh, I will see you again in episode one, where we will be beginning to form our characters and groups. Have a great day. Goodbye.